okay for today on log properties. I want to zoom in on this and remind you that logs and exponentials are what's of each other? Inverses. Okay, they're inverses of each other. And that means if I pick a point here, like this point right here, which is at 0, 1, and the reason it would be that is because, look, the x becomes 0. Do you get anything to the 0 must be 1? That's why that spot's there. If 0, 1 is there, then what's there? 1, 0, because the x and the y flip around. That's what inverses do. All right, on that note, let's review that from yesterday. I would give you a problem like this. y equals 3 to the x, and you had to rewrite it as its inverse. So flip-flop x and y. And then solve, and it'll require you to be able to know how to write logs. I mean, this is the log chapter after all. X equals three to the Y. And then you have to know the circle of logs. And Elton John sings it better than me, but Log base three, I always got to start with what's the base, and then it'll jump across to the other side, and then it'll jump back again, and there it is. Now, I usually like to have my y equals on the other side, so bear with me while I take this and move it over to the other side, and I have y equals log base three of x, and that's the inverse of that. Does that make sense to you? All right. Actually, it's the inverse of the original one, my bad. This one and this one are inverses. This was just a in between where I was flipping X and Y. Okay, uh, next thing that I have taught you from yesterday was if I gave you this log base three of X minus seven, you should be good enough at this to find a few things. Hint, make this equal to three, because that'll be an easy one for an XY chart. Hint, make this part equal to 1, because then you won the argument. And another one is make this part equal to 1 third, because if you could make that part 1 third, then log base 3 of 1 third is actually pretty easy. So here's three things you'd want to make the inside be. Another one might be smart would be to make it be 9. So, Haven, can you give me one of those things that would be smart to put in? Uh, negative one. Negative what? One. Oh, I think you mean that the answer might be negative one. <laughs> can you tell me what the X would be that you would put in? Seven and a third. Seven and one third. That's a tricky one, and you figured it out. Seven and one third, when you put it in here, will make the inside turn into one third. And then you've got log base 3 of 1 third, and that's what you said, negative 1. Okay, 7 and 1 third, negative 1 is a great combo. Especially good because it's really hard to get answers that are negative. This is one of your points that will have a negative. So when you're graphing it, it's especially smart to get it to come out to 1 over the base. All right, give me another point, Sam. What'd you put in and what'd you get? Put in 8, got 0, because that's the one where when you put in 8, it turns the inside into 1. Ooh, another thing that would be smart is to find the asymptote. Who has the asymptote on their list? I didn't even mention it yesterday. I mean, since yesterday, but I did mention it yesterday. What did you find was the asymptote, sir? Uh, I think it was 7. Yes. Everybody put 7 on your list and write A-S-Y-M. It's the asymptote. <coughs> Why is that important? Because, hey, if you've got an asymptote on the graph at 7, then you know the graph doesn't even start until you get to that right side of that asymptote. So it really helps you to kind of narrow down where your points are going to be. And if you make enough dots, you just have to connect the dots. I think you've got the idea here. Give me one more point that you had, Allison. All right, so you put in 10 because then you get log base three of 10 minus seven, and 10 minus seven is three. So log base three of three is one. 
Are we all feeling okay about that? Okay, good. Next two things I need to teach you come from this chart. Everybody find uh, this chart right here, log properties. I think everybody knows this one, that if the base and the argument are the same, then the answer is one. I think you know, all know that when you get a one in the argument, you get nothing, you get zero. I think you know that you can't have zero right here. And in fact, even better than that, when this part is zero, you have found the asymptote. When you make the argument part zero, you're getting the asymptote. I did mention this one before. When the bases are the same, like seven to the power of log base seven of eight, then can you look at that property and tell me what the answer is? It's eight. Why? Because the bases are the same. The answer's already there. And I proved it the other day. I'll just briefly prove it again. This is actually considered an exponent problem. So that if I wanted to say it was equal to something, and I don't know what it is, I could put x. All of that equals x. Then I could rewrite it as a log. This is log base 7, and then you do the circle of logs. Go over to x, and then come back here to this. Equals log base 7 of 8. And one of the things we're going to really be banging the drum on later this chapter is if the bases... Or if you have a log base this and a log base that on each side, you can drop them. And then the answer is just x equals 8. It's like, it's like canceling. Technically, it's not canceling. But it's like you can ignore them, and you know that this has to equal that. So there, I proved the answer is 8. Wouldn't it have been easier to just know that if these two are the same, then the answer is 8? Yeah, it's easier to just know that, but I'm proving it to you. Okay, so... Next one I got to talk about briefly is this one. What does this one tell you about where you could put that M? You can put it in front. Look, they put it in front. Let me explain why. I think once you see this one, you will get it. Log base 3 of 3 to the 4th. I think we all by now know that the answer to this is 4. Do you agree with that? Now, just imagine for a moment that you heard that you could put it in front. So you go and put it in front. Then it should still be equal to 4, shouldn't it? And look, you get how log base 3 of 3 is 1, and then you just times it by 4. That makes sense to you? So it works. You can take that power off of the argument and move it to the front. That's called the power rule. Okay, we're going to use that one a lot today. So let's just make sure you really get that. Let's say I had log base 4 of 4 to the m. Would you write another statement that's actually equal to this? Well, don't just say m, though. <laughs> I know the answer is m. But it's m times log base 4 of 4. So basically, you can just move this to the front. Okay, I feel like that's good enough. Here's another property that I think is so much easier to just explain. It's weird, but it's true. If you have log base 3 of 7, I know some of you know how you could use math alpha math on your calculator to get that answer. Math alpha math. It would actually work. And, you, and then your calculator pops up with log and a little box here and a little box here. And you can put in the 3 and you can put in the 7. But what if you have an old style calculator that math alpha math doesn't pull up that? Well then, if you don't have the right operating system, these are actually a real pain to put in. But let me tell you how you can do it because this is a property of logs that you don't have to worry about in normal numbers. It's called a base change. So I could totally see this as a uh, ACT question because it's so simple and if you know what you're talking about with logs, it's it's actually really easy, but it seems really hard. Log base 3 of 7. What if they want that to have a base of 10? Okay. Well, I don't think you know how to do that yet, so I'm going to show you. Log base 3 of 7 is equal to, and I'll see if you get where I'm getting this from. Log 7 over log 3. You can take log of the argument and put it over log of the base. 
and they will stay equal to each other. Like the black one and the red one are equal. They give you the same answer. I know that seems weird, but it's true. Okay, now I want to challenge you then, what's the base of the top log? Well, it doesn't have a base, so what's the base? Base 10. And what's the base of the bottom log? 10. Do you get that I just changed this to have base 10? It used to have base 3, and now it has base 10. Now, let me, let me show you something that you got to understand first. Just do you get that the fraction uh, 3 eighths and the fraction, let's make it twice as big, 6 over 16, do you get that they're actually equal to each other? Even though both of these numbers are bigger than both of these numbers, they're proportionally bigger. And so 3 eighths is equal to 6 sixteenths. Do you get that? So even though these have different numbers, they're still equal, right? Okay. Now, so this is going to be the part that might melt your brain a little bit. So if... I keep the logs just like this and say, you know what? I don't actually want base 10. I want it to be base 11. Every time I make the base bigger, I make the answer a little smaller. So proportionally, that's equal to the other one. I can use any base I want. How about... Base 17, can you do that? Sure. Now I have it in base 17. How about in base 1.6, is that allowed? Sure, as long as you don't use a base one. Base of 1.6. You can have any base you want, and I'm just making both the top number and the bottom number, I'm scaling them to be a little bigger or a little smaller, and the ratio stays the same. Yes. So the, for bases, you can't have one. But for the one on top, the, the, the other number, the argument, that one has to stay positive, and that's its only rule, stay positive. But for the base, it's stay positive, and you can't be one. <coughs> bases can't be one. But they could be 1.6. All right, so this one without any base, what base does that mean? Yeah. Base 10. How about if I make it base E? Is that allowed? Sure. Any base you want. Specify what the base is. So you can specify any base you want as long as you keep it the same base. Can you just say it's base X on both things? Does that still like You can. Okay. You can. More likely that a question on the ACT would be like, make this to be base 11 or something. And it would be, seem really complicated, but it's actually super easy. As long as you know the basic framework that the Second one goes on top, and the bottom one, the, the one that was first actually, goes on the bottom. That's all there is to it, and you could pick any base you want. Okay, so one more. Let's say I had log base 4 of 17. Do you agree that is some decimal? Don't really know what it is. It's okay, I, I, I can be okay with not knowing exactly what that is. But if you had to put it in a calculator and you couldn't find the way to use a different base... What could you put in the calculator? Log 17 over log 4. That's all there is to it. And that one has a button. Do you get that there's a button that just says log? And that means base 10. So that one you could put in the calculator. And, and isn't there another button that does logs? Ln. LN. So why should this be okay then? Well, because I, I can change to any base I want. So I'm going to change to that. And that'll mean it's log base what? Log base E. And if you divide this, you will get the same exact thing. Okay. Now learning about all these weird properties of logs. Here is the last two. These two properties, and they are about condensing and expanding logs. 
this side is considered condensed and this side is considered, or this one is also condensed. And then this other side over here, these are considered expanded because, you know, they're bigger, but they're equal. And I think it'll make a lot more sense if I actually give you numbers and show you what this would look like with numbers. But here's the basic theme. Do you get that these two are multiplied? And add goes with multiply. Doesn't add kind of go with multiply? Yeah. So if I take 2 plus 2 plus 2, couldn't I have done 2 times 3? Yeah. So add kind of goes with multiply. And how about divide? Eh, it's a little harder to say how divide goes with subtract, but in this case, those are considered like they go together. They're paired, I guess I'd say. Okay. So let me show you a problem. Log base 3 of 2x. Do you get I can split that up? And that's a multiply right now. And I can split it up into, and that means expand it into, two logs. Their bases will always stay the same. That's a big deal. There's only that one property where we use base change, where we change the base, but... And all the other properties, the bases stay the same. So if it's log base 3, it's going to be log base 3. And I just made it into two log base 3s. Well, and there's two things, 2 and x. And that's pretty much it. You just got to remember what to put in between them. What did I say went with multiply? Plus. So there's your answer. Do you get what I just did? I gave you something condensed, and you had to expand it into two logs. You might not understand why you would ever care about that. Usually, you start with two and you condense it down to one, and the reason that's good is for solving equations. You're never gonna be able to solve an equation unless you can get it down to one log. If you have two logs on one side of the equation, you gotta get them together into one log. Otherwise, you can't solve it. Okay, so let's show you one of those. Log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of 2 equals log base 3 of 8. I'm showing you why we need this property. Okay, would you agree I have two logs? And didn't I just say a second ago that we wanted to condense them down to just be one log? So, Sam, what, are, what is it? Log base... This is a plus. Oh, x times two. X times two, and I'm gonna say two times x just because we usually put the two first. And, it, and x two would have been fine. All right, and then the other side is still log base three of eight. And do you remember me saying that these can not really cancel, but I can ignore them? Because if they're the same base, then two x has to equal eight. So then what's x have to equal? I solved it, boom. See what happened there? I had to use condensing logs, put the two logs together, and then I had logs on both sides, and I got to know I can technically not cancel them, but ignore them. See how that worked? Used a couple properties of logs. All right. So, let's put our notes hold for us. Expand this one. All right, I have a hint for you. Take this. Make it into x to the one-half power. It'll be easier. And everybody expand that as much as you can. And the directions in these are always expand and simplify. It won't just on a test ever say just expand. It's expand it and simplify it if you can. So in the, if in the middle of your problem, you have log base 3 of 3, you got to go, oh, that's actually 1. So when you can simplify it like that and change like this to 1, you should. So expand it and simplify it. All right, so I got a bunch of log base twos here. And I'm gonna say log base two of eight, and since they're multiplies, I'm gonna add log base two of y to the third, and one more, log base two of x to the one-half power. 
because square root means to the power of one half. And you would think that you'd be done. But does anybody see one that can be simplified? Oh, Sean. All right, he is correct, and that will expand it, as in make it wider. That three goes in front. I bet you didn't see that one coming. And this one half goes in front. Why do we have to put it in front? Because that's considered expanded form. And I know you could argue it doesn't seem any wider than it was before, but that's considered expanded. Wait, wait, we're not done yet. Okay, what was your follow-up question? Wouldn't, the, the, wouldn't that change the bases? No, it wouldn't. The bases have to be the same for you to put the exponents the, on. Uh, it doesn't matter what this base is. That can go in front. It doesn't matter what this base is, the power here, it can go down to the front. All right, and now you see something. You're just itching to change it. So go ahead. Yes, I could tell you had seen it. A lot of people didn't ever notice that, but maybe somebody already caught this. That's three. Did anybody catch that till now? Ooh, a bunch of you did. Good job. Three plus three log base two of y plus one half log base two of x. Whew. Now, I have a pro tip for you. The way you can tell if you're done Always look at these and see, can, is there any way to break that up anymore? Look at the arguments. See this eight, that could be made into a two to the third. So that's why this one wasn't done being simplified yet because the argument hadn't been broken up yet. So again, a lot of times kids get a problem like this and they're like, here's my final answer. Log base two of four plus log base two of X and they, Ah, wrong because you didn't simplify. And how could you have known if you'd have looked at this and said, can I break that up? Oh, I can't. It's actually two squared. And then that's your hint that, oh, that two can go in front. And then, oh, this is actually one. And so then the answer is actually two. Two plus log base two of x. All right. Now over here. That one is already expanded, so what do you think we're supposed to do? Condense it. Condense it. Everybody condense that down into just one log. Whenever we give one to you, you'll be able to condense it down to just one log. And what's the base? So it'll have the same base. So there, I know it's log base three of something. I like to think of this as like, when you pack up and you go on a trip, don't you first take your stuff and put it in like a suitcase? And then you take your suitcase and you put it in the car. You don't just like grab your socks and run to the car. You probably put them away first. And then you put all your stuff in the car at the same time. So I think we should start by putting this three away. Where do you think it should go? Up there. Yep, we're putting it away. And then we're gonna put this two away first. We're not just gonna go run out and throw it in the car. We're going to put it away first. It goes over here. And they both have the same log. And so basically now I just have two things. This and this. And there's a minus in between. Them. Let's make sure that's really clear. That was a minus sign there. Okay, so minus signs go with divide. So I got to have something divided by something. Not times. That was when it was add. Add goes with multiply. This is minus, so it goes with divide. So I think I've made it clear enough that that would have to be divided by that. There you go. Now, do you remember my old saying, if you can factor it, you should? If I could have factored and canceled anything, I should have, but I can't because there isn't an X that would factor out of the bottom. So I can't cancel those X's. 
If I could, though, I should. If you can factor it, you should. If you factored the top and the bottom and stuff canceled, that would be good to do. All right. So that's expanding and condensing. And now we have work done. So on this page, here are some problems that I'd like you to do. Uh, the first one, I think the top row is pretty good. So let's do that whole top row. Then I think that one's too weird. And this one's too weird. But that number nine's good. You know why we like to deal with tens and hundreds and thousands? Yep, because when we use log, what base does it have? Base 10. And do you get that log base 10 of like 100 can be simplified? Log base 10 of 1,000 can be simplified? So we better do number nine. Um, and we should do one that's got, like 10 a nice normal divide one. So let's do that one. Okay, so we're skipping 7, 8, 11, and 12. And on the next page, we're skipping 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, And on this page, remember that change of base thing? Like this one, for example? Do you get it's just log 72 over log 6? All right. So don't, don't like, lose your mind on these. They're, they're super easy. You just, let's do a couple of them. How about we do these four? Skip that, skip that, skip that. Skip that. And that's it. I think that's reasonable sized. All right, and I was gonna grade homework today, but this is freaky. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven kids absent. Uh, and that's gonna make it much more difficult because then all of those kids are gonna be like, how am I supposed to grade the homework? And then, ah. So I think I'm gonna wait and hopefully we have, this is like the most kids absent in one day in a long time. So. We'll wait, we'll grade some homework later. And that's all I have for the video for today. Question quick first. Um, yeah, so from like the last unit, chapter seven, we had like a drop box for like seven 